Hey guys, welcome to my July TBR. I have been reading so many great books in June that I'm excited to create a TBR for next month and hopefully we can continue this excellent reading streak. So once again, I have this little notebook that I created a little TBR formula for myself, uh, which just has a bunch of genres that I like to read books from. So I'm going to be using this to build my TBR for the month. My goal was to kind of make this a smaller TBR this month so I had more space to mood read. Um, but I've already pulled out a number of books, so I'm thinking that it probably won't end up being small. It never does. Uh, we'll just see how, how this goes. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to find books that go for the Read Your Bookshelf Challenge and um, Books and Lala's Buzzwordathon. So I have them written down. I have the papers printed out. So for the Read Your Bookshelf Challenge, um, in July, the prompt is a book that you've been avoiding. And as soon as I saw this prompt, I figured I knew which book it was going to be. So I set up my TBR cart here a while ago, and there's a book that's been on here for a long time that I have been avoiding for sure. And if it's not for this prompt, it will never get picked. And it's definitely this book. Um, well, this is three books. This is the His Dark Materials series by Philip Pullman. The first book is called The Golden Compass. I have heard such mixed reviews on my YouTube channel from when I hauled this book and then every time I talk about it, everything from like, oh, I love that book too, I hate that book, you're gonna hate it, everything. And all these different thoughts as to why people hate it. And it's just one of those books that I've decided I need to read for myself and see what I think of it. So, how long is this one book, actually? It's right around 300 pages for the first one, it looks like. Um, I don't really even know what this is. It's fantasy, I think it's YA fantasy, and I don't really know anything going into it because this is just a bind-up, and it doesn't really say anything. So, not really sure what this is. If I DNF it, I'm still counting it because it's getting it off my list. Yeah, so yeah, this has to be the book that I've been avoiding for sure. Then for Kayla's challenge, the word or the prompt for July is book related words. And I think I'm going to kind of kill two birds with one stone here. I have this book, uh, The Pages of Her Life, which is also one of the fiction books that I wanted to read this year. And I think pages is a good book word. So I'm going to pick this one for this prompt. It's gonna bother me that these are falling down here. Okay. So this is by James L. Rubart, and he is kind of like a Frank Peretti type writer. He writes Christian fiction, like supernatural suspense often. This one I do remember reading or starting once when I got it out from the library and I didn't get very far and I've owned it for quite a while, so it's about time I get to it. Uh, so. It's about a character who, whose name is Allison, and she somehow comes across a diary, I think? Oh yes, but also in her personal life, her dad dies, and apparently he was leaving a, living a secret life and left her mom in a bunch of debt. But this journal that she finds, her words, when she starts writing her words down, they begin to disappear. And it says, and new ones fill the empty spaces. Words that force her to look at everything she knows about herself in a new light. So I have read The Man He Never Was by James L. Rubart, and I'm excited to continue because I really did enjoy that one. And I know I own a couple more of his books too, so I wanna get this one read. So those are the two books I'm gonna be reading for those challenges. Now, to my formula here. The next book I've been picking lately is an Agatha Christie book, and I'm not planning on doing a video on my channel for the month of July, possibly not the rest of the year, I'm trying to solve an Agatha Christie. I just want to take a break from it. But the book that I do have that I decided to pick up for July is apparently a really good one for solving. So I'm kind of debating here. I was originally thinking of doing Evil Under the Sun. Um, I heard about this one. Well, I've actually heard about this one for a while. Becca from Hicks Picks Books read it last year and it was on my summer TBR and I never got to it. And then recently, um, Too Fond of Books just shared, Janelle from Too Fond of Books just shared a list of 
summer Agatha Christie books and this is one of the ones she said but she also said this would be a good one for a video so if I want to do a video yet do I save this for that I'm not sure then I thought I should do the next Tommy and Tuppence book because I loved book one and I don't think that series is really solvable the mysteries but it turns out I don't own book two although I really thought I did it's not here uh, book two is Partners in Crime, and I'm pretty sure I don't have that one. Yes, unless I can't read the spines, I don't have that one, which is sad. So, then I think I'm just going to go with this one. I'm going to try to do Evil Under the Sun. Um, and I'm probably, well, let's read a little bit of it. The beautiful bronzed body of Arlena Stewart lay face down on the beach, but strangely there was no sun, and Arlena was not sunbathing. She had been strangled. Okay. Evil Under the Sun definitely gives summer vibes, so that will be my Agatha Christie for the month. And I need to get my hands on book two of the Tommy and Tuppence series because I hear that series should be read in order, and I know I own other ones. Okay, I own the rest of the series, I just don't own book two. Oh, that's frustrating. I own N or M by the pricking of my thumbs and Poster of Fate. So I just need to get my hands on Partners in Crime. Uh, but yes, I'll do this one in July. And maybe buy the next one, next Tommy and Tuppence for August. Okay, um, another thing that I'm going to be joining in for July, there's two other readathon type things I'm going to be joining. One of which is Karina from What Brings Karina Joy is doing a battle of the books. So for July, if I got this right, uh, we are going to be reading William Shakespeare, A Midnight Summer's, A Midsummer Night's Dream. I always get that. I want to say midnight. Um, we're going to be reading that, which according to my copy here is only 20 pages. And I mean, these pages are, there's a lot of words, but I'm going to be reading that. And then in August, she has a middle grade book that goes along with it that we're going to be reading. So I'm going to be reading some Shakespeare in July. That's definitely out of my element. And then I'm also for the first time going to be participating in Jane Austen July. And my priority book, and I think this, oh, I can't even remember who all does Jane Austen July. I will look it up and leave them in the description. But um, my plan is to read Pride and Prejudice. This is, I believe, the group read as well. And I wanted to reread this. This is on my list of classics to read. I have read it before and I've had a very different, I read it twice. And I've had different opinions both times I've read it. So I want to read it again and see what I think of it this time. So definitely that, and I love these Wordsworth Collector Editions. Beautiful. And the back's pretty cool too. And then there was more prompts for Jane Austen July, and I don't think I'm going to really dive into the rest of it, other than one of them was read another one of her non-six main novels. And I was thinking of reading Lady Susan, I have this one that has Northanger Abbey, Lady Susan, the Watsons, and Sanditon in here, and I think, um, I think Lady Susan is only like 20 pages or so as well. It's pretty short, plus it's written in letters, so, okay, it's longer than I thought it was. It's like 50 pages long, so I'm probably going to also try to read Lady Susan. I know nothing about it. Then normally I've been trying to read a classic, um, but Pride and Prejudice will kind of be my classic. Plus I'm reading some Sherlock, or not Sherlock, Shakespeare. Wow, those are very different. But then I'm also going to throw another classic on here that I'm okay if I don't get to, but I want to read it soon. And that is Rilla of Ingleside. This is the final book in the Anne series. And I hear, I don't know, people have mixed feelings on the ending of the Anne series, the last few books. But I really enjoyed book seven, and I'm hoping that this one I love as much as I did that one. So this one I think will be following Rilla, which is kid number, what is she, four, five of Anne's youngest daughter. And I think just Shirley is younger than her. I don't remember the order of their children. Um, so I'm going to be doing this one, and it's 1914, I think that Jem goes off to war. We'll see how this one goes. Okay, so now back to my formula. I need a middle grade book. And once again, I think I'm going to do two books instead of just one. I really want to do 
this one. I want to do Prairie Lotus. Uh, I've heard this one is Laura Ingalls, but it's she's a Chinese immigrant, I think. So very excited about that. And Linda Sue Park is a very um, good author. I've really enjoyed a lot of her books. This one's set in Dakota Territory in 1880. So this is going to be one of my middle grade books. And then my other one is very different. Sci-fi, middle grade sci-fi. Um, I want to read Scent. This is the second book in the Missing series by Margaret Peterson Haddix. I read the first book in June, I believe it was June, maybe end of May, and really enjoyed it. Um, it starts out with two boys that are adopted that start getting these letters, and it ends up having a sci-fi twist. It turns out um, they were found on an airplane on a like at an airport, a plane that just appeared out of nowhere. Also, there was 36 babies and these were all adopted and now things are happening to those 36 babies. And right at the end of book one slash, I'm assuming where we're going with book two, is there's going to be time travel and it's going to be kind of like have some historical elements because we're going to be traveling back in time. And so I'm excited to see where this goes. I think I enjoyed book one, but I think I'm going to like book two even better. Okay, next up, I need some kind of mystery suspense that's not just Agatha Christie. So I'm going to look on my shelf here first. I don't really think I have much left here. It's definitely time for me to start filling this in. I don't have any mystery suspense on here. Um, so then I've got my TBR shelf. I ended up picking up two for my shelf. The first one is Dead Man's Puzzle. This is apparently book 10 in the Puzzle Lady mystery series. I just shared this in my last book haul. I hope you don't have to read these in order. Um, the other one I think I have is book 17 or 18 in the series. So this one is before that and I wanna give this a try. It's definitely, it's got some crosswords throughout and some of them are solved. So hopefully the other ones are the spots. Hopefully I don't have to do the solving. That's all I wanna say. Um, and this one says, Sherry is off on her honeymoon when Chief Harper comes to Cora Felton, asking her to solve a crossword puzzle found on the body of old man Overmeyer. Small problem. Cora is the Millie Vanilli of Cruciverbaltis? I don't know what that word means. Her niece, Sherry, writes the crossword puzzle column. Yeah, I don't know. Very curious about this. Uh, I'm very thankful to Emily for sending this book to me. And then the other mystery slash historical fiction really that I decided to pick up is book three in the Maisie Dobbs series. This one is Messenger of Truth. I have been loving this series. All of the mysteries kind of have to do with World War One. Right now we're sitting right between World War One and World War Two. This one says it takes place in London 1931. It's on the oh, wow okay on the night before the opening of his new and much anticipated ex exhibition at a famed Mayfair gallery. Nicholas Basington Hope falls to his death. The police declared an accident, but the dead man's twin sister, Georgina, isn't convinced. When the authorities refuse to conduct further investigations and instead close the case, Georgina takes matters into her, her own hands, seeking out a fellow graduate, graduate from Girton College, Maisie Dobbs, psychologist and investigator. Oh yes, that is the perfect. She is a psychologist and investigator. That's perfect. So, loving the series. Also, this paperback feels like a really good one to read. I love that. It's very important to have books that feel good in the hands while you're reading. Okay, next up on my list is historical fiction. Now I did a historical fiction TBR video a while ago and I had a link to a Goodreads list of the books that are currently on my historical fiction TBR. Of course, after all the comments, I've now added way more. Um, but I wanted you guys to go and vote and so I could read the top book. And the top one that has been voted for the most is no surprise to me. It's The Last Bookshop in London. So this is the historical fiction that I'm going to be prioritizing in July. Oh my goodness, my pile's getting so huge and I'm not done. Um, so this has to do, it's inspired by the true World War II history of the few bookshops to survive the Blitz. And it was set in August 1939. And I have heard almost exclusively excellent things about this. And this author, Madeline Martin, has a new book coming out in the next few months that I shared on my anticipated releases that I'm really excited to read as well. So hopefully I enjoyed this one. Uh, yeah, very excited about that. And 
And then I kind of want to read another historical fiction and there are so many I want to read. There's a couple authors that I've been introduced to lately that I've been loving that I would like to pick up more of their books, but then I also have some authors that I haven't tried yet that I would like to try. But, oh man, actually, okay, I've got a few. I've got a few. I kind of want to do Veiled in Smoke uh, because this is on my list of books to read this year. kind of want to do The Last Year of the War because Susan Meisner has not disappointed me yet. I'm going to pick out a couple books here. Um, I want to do an Amanda Dykes book. Whichever one of these is first, I'll quickly look this up. Apparently each of these books came out in 2019, 2020, and 2021. So Whose Waves... Okay, I always get tongue-tied on her titles. Whose Waves These Are is the oldest one that I own, so that's an option. And I'm gonna pick up one more two, one or two more out yet. Well, let's pick out another Joanna Davidson Polita Politano. Now I know how to say her last name. Uh, but once again, I wanna figure out which one of these is the oldest. Because I feel like authors generally get better as they go, and I want to start with their maybe less well-written stuff and then move into their better stuff. Okay, so this one's published in 2018. I think this one is her newer one. Um, this one is 2021. And I've got the love note. This one is 2020. I actually have another one of hers too. Finding Lady Enderly. That's 2019. So this is the oldest one that I have, A Rumored Fortune, and these are set in Victorian times. Okay, I could probably keep going here. Oh, I kind of want to add... Oh, I kind of want to add... An... Okay, wait, I'm going to. I'm going to add The Nature of Small Birds because I loved uh, the book that I read by her last month. Um, well, it's really like this week. Um, and my talk about that will be coming up soon. But I have five books here. Let's say this is number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. And I'm going to do a random number generator because I can't pick. I really want to read them all. I don't know who I am anymore with this historical fiction love for the genre that I've been having. Random number generator. Numbers one through five. Okay, so you know I'm not cheating. Let's hit generate. Number one. Oh, wow, would you look at that? I think I would have been happy no matter what it was, but I'm like very excited about this one. So this is uh, back in 1975, 3,000 children were airlifted out of Saigon to be adopted into Western homes. And now one of those children announces her plans to return to Vietnam to find her birth mother. Her loving adoptive family is suddenly thrown back to the events surrounding her unconventional arrival in their lives. So, oh, I hope I love this one as much as I love the one I just finished. So these other ones will just get put back on my TBR pile. Okay, and then I have at least, okay, I should probably cut it off here. I think one more book to add to my TBR because my pile is really high already. Um, and I want to try to read kind of like a Sanderson every month, a Brandon Sanderson book because I have a few that I want to I'm trying to get caught up on his books. And I've got the Skyward Flight collection here. So this is three novellas, um, Sunreach, Redawn, and Evershore. He wrote these with Jancy Patterson. I don't know how that's gonna go, him writing them with someone. The first one, I would say, could be considered a novella. Second one, we're getting closer to like actual book territory. And this third one is like, that's a real, that's, a, that's an actual novel, but very curious. Also, um, I looked up Jancy Patterson. She, I don't know if it says it here. She, I think it's on Instagram, sets up scenes for books with Barbie dolls. It's quite weird and a little bit disturbing. Um, it has made me a little bit hesitant to read these books, but I still want to. Uh, so I'm only making myself read one this month because my TBR is so long, but I might continue. Since I just finished Cytonic recently, I feel like I want to read these when that series is still fresh. And I think 
I'm assuming one of these comes after each one. Like one after Skyward, one after Starsight, one after Cytonic. And it has deleted scenes from Skyward. Okay, so our first story is in the... I think we are with FM. And then in Redon, we're with... Oh yeah, okay, so she's from uh, book two. Oh, Jorgen, okay. That'll be interesting because he's not really in book three really much at all. Okay, so let's see if I can carry this stack. If I can't, I mean, maybe maybe it's just too big. Okay, so, hmm, this is my TBR for July. Let's see, can I back up enough? Yeah, there we go. Um, some of these are collections, so I'm not going to be reading the entire book. So it's really not as many books as it seems. Um, yeah, let me know what I should pick up first here. It's a lot of variety. So thanks for being here, guys, and listening to me chat about all the books that I want to read right away.